So you're looking for an easy to use ambient light solution for your smart TV? Well then watch this video until the end because I did a lot of research on this topic over the last year and also I made a prototype that is working with Android TV and we're looking to improve this even further and bring you guys a fully working product that is affordable, easy to use and the perfect solution for any smart TV. So let's go! So guys, here it is, the first prototype of an ambient light for smart TVs that is affordable and really easy to use. And today in this video I'll show you how it works and tell you also a little bit about the product, how we started and everything. So well, as you can see in the background, I have a lot of LED lights, so I'm a big fan of Philips Hue. Basically my whole workspace is full of Philips Hue and I'm really in love with ambient lights. Now I'm selling Chick Android TVs in Austria. They're basically um, TVs without tuner, so IP TVs. Um, with that you don't have to pay any broadcasting fees and the Android TV is working really fine. I don't use anything else than Android TV right now because, well, um, it's really fast. The new generation processors are really good. Um, you can watch everything on Android TV. I just use my PlayStation for gaming, but that's it. Now most of the ambient lights on the market, um, let's call them ambient lights, because Philips has a patent on ambient light. That that's also why you cannot find any other TVs with um, built-in LEDs because that's Philips only. Now in case if you want to have LEDs on your TV you have to um, buy a DIY kit or any kind of aftermarket kit for it. But the problem with all of them is that they are very um, expensive, very complicated, some of them are not working really good. So when I was selling um, the TVs, I actually wanted to also sell on ambient lights. But yeah, it's not possible to build it into the television because, well, um, that's Philips invention. We have to use some kind of aftermarket kit. And I was doing a lot of research on this topic, where to find an um, ambient light that works with smart TVs. And guys, it's almost impossible to find an easy and cheap solution on the market. Well, you can build everything with a Raspberry Pi. And let me quickly explain how these Android TVs usually um, work, actually these ambient lights for Android TVs. So usually um, most of the cheap solutions, they are using an HDMI grabber. That means you connect the source like the PlayStation 4 to this device, it grabs the HDMI signal, then it analyzes the signal, what kind of colors in the signal, where are they, and then it's basically um, controlling the LEDs and telling them um, to light up in which color. Now this is working fine if you only use HDMI inputs, but this ambient light kit is not working if you're using just your smart TV. And during the last year I didn't use any HDMI input except with the PlayStation 4. So I could actually buy an ambient light kit for the PlayStation 4, but then when I watch something on the smart TV it is not working anymore. Then there was a solution with a camera, and this is basically where you place a camera on your TV, it's um, analyzing um, what's on the screen, but you know a camera it's really not a perfect solution because when it's really dark and the picture is too bright, it displays wrong colors and I'm not a big fan of that. So somehow you need to get the signal from the smart TV in order to analyze what's on the screen. And this is really hard because most of the smart TVs, they just stop putting out the signal when they're an Android TV. And this is why we made a solution that is working with Android TVs. And let me quickly show you how it works. So guys, there is the backside of the TV and while we now have to attach the LEDs to the out of frame. And well, here is our sample and as you can see not too many LEDs because well this is a sample for a PC monitor, but um, we can still make it work on Android TV. If we have a closer look here at the PCB, as you can see there is a USB port right over here, um, USB cable soldered to the port as well. And here we have a DC in check, but this is only needed if you have really a lot of LEDs. So right now we don't need that. So let me quickly attach all the LEDs to the outside, then let's connect it and then let's have a look at the software side. 
So guys, I will just start right over here. So um, on the outer side of the frame and attach it here to the frame. And as you can see, this fits perfectly. I could also attach it here, but well, um, I don't want that it spreads too much out from the TV. So probably I'll give it a try right over here on the edge. So guys, I was now attaching um, double-sided tape to the outside of the frame, as you can see, because right now um, the LED stripe doesn't have some adhesive tape, but well, um, in the final version, for sure, there will be tape on it. All right, so yeah, let's attach the LED stripe and then let's connect it to the USB and let's turn it on and let's check it out. Now, probably the hardest part is to get around the corner with the LED stripe. Now, usually you have to cut it, solder it, or um, yeah, put in an extension wire or something like that. But here, as you can see, you just have to bend the cable. This is a flexible LED stripe design, and that means you can just bend it. And as you can see, um, you can continue with attaching the LED stripe. So pretty easy. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, so the LED strip is attached, as you can see, and yeah. Um, I have to use some double-sided tape, as you can see right over here, but well, it's getting the job done pretty good. Now the PCB, well, I've just attached it here to the television for now, but this will get a case also with some mounts, so in the final version. And now here we have the USB connector. Now you need to have a smart TV with USB, but while well, every Android smart TV has a USB port, and I'm just connecting it on the Chick television to the USB 2.0 port. And yeah, let's turn it around and let's check it out. So guys, the Android TV is now up and running and in order to access the LEDs, we have to download an application that's called um, Ambient Light and I can quickly show you it. So it's called Android Ambilight application. It's available in the App Store and well, as you can see right now, it says LED strip not connected. So you go down there to refresh and now it will ask you to get access to the USB 2.0. I press OK, and as you can see, LED strip connected. So guys, while the ambient light is now working, as you can see, it's now in static mode, and as you can see, the light distribution looks pretty good. So the LED stripe is definitely not a problem in development of this. Um, then let's quickly go to the application so I can show you how it looks like. So while um, the static mode, which you can see right over here, so single color mode works everywhere. Even if you go out of Android TV, it will work with your Sony PlayStation, it will work with your HDMI input sources. But every time you want to change a color, you have to go to the app and well, tell the LED stripe, so basically um, the controller, what you want. So basically which color you want. And you can do that here in this application. It's right now well a third party application, but we're working on something similar. And um, we can quickly go back so I can show you also different effects which are looking pretty cool. So there's this rainbow um, effect. So if you go to color effect mode, you will get this amazing looking rainbow colors. And I mean, even the rainbow colors are looking already gorgeous with every content. But what people actually want is what Philips has included into their televisions. And this is called screen capture mode. I'll just show you that in a second um, because first I want to show you the settings of it. So here we have the settings of this application and here it's quite complicated because what you have to do is you have to attach the LED stripes and then you have to um, count the LEDs. So you have to count the LEDs horizontal, you have to count the LEDs vertical, you have to adjust the bottom gap because I don't have L any LEDs at the bottom so that's why I'm using the bottom gap of 73 which equals the number of LEDs horizontal. Then um, there are some settings which you have to adjust for your individual controller, like the serial um, rate. Um, here, for instance, also what happens if the screen is off, then we'll switch to single color and such things. Now, when it comes to screen capture, um, this is pretty tricky and this is why it takes us quite a long time to develop it. Because if you go to screen capture in this third party application, well, then it's recording your screen and if I now go through the menu as you can see there is a little bit of ambient light up at the bottom but um, also here on the left side but as you can see it's kind of weird it's kind of random because sometimes you just get different colors there is not too much red in the picture now it turned red as you can see everything turns red and yeah um, if you have too much black tones like you've seen before it just shuts off a lot of applications and yeah getting this right is actually really really tricky so we can quickly open up a youtube video so you can see how it looks like maybe i don't know a video from me because of copyright so let's take the boombox 2 from jbl and there we go 
Now, as you can see here up there, the reddish tone right over here above my head, it's because, well, I have a reddish skin right over here. And yeah, basically the whole algorithm from this third party application is not working good. And you will find now one or two solutions on the market which are also using um, that third party application. But well, um, if you buy that, you have to live with it. And as you can see here in the menu, actually it's working kind of okay, but sometimes it's just showing um, colors which shouldn't be shown. Like for instance, here there is too much red, I'm not sure where it's coming from. Here, yeah, well, it's now red because it turns red from here. It's a little bit weird. When you go to Netflix, this is the limitation right now, um, which all manufacturers have. If you go to Netflix, then, well, the application just shuts down, the screen recording stops. If you go to Amazon Prime, then it's actually working, but only in the menu. In the menu, you have that Ambilight effects, um, just waiting for Prime to load up. And as you can see there, the Ambilight is actually working. But as soon as you start a video, let's for instance start this video, then as you can see, um, it will just, um, yeah, turn off screen recording. These are the limitations right now if you're using this third party application. This is something we're working on to get fixed. Also what we're working on is adding an HDMI um, input that if you switch the input to your PlayStation, that it doesn't stop. Because right now, if I switch to the Sony PlayStation, it will just stop. So all you can do right now with the solutions on the market is you can go to the Ambilight application, go to single color or color effect and enjoy some beautiful colors around it, but they, then they have nothing to do with your picture, which is not what we want. So guys, um, I think right now it's a good start. So we see that the hardware is working, but now we need to work on the software part. And now I want your feedback. Tell us guys, which applications do you want? We know right now the limitations of it and we're trying to get a workaround for that. But we also want to add new features for the application. So give me some input guys and we'll try to see what we can do with software engineers in China. Um, yeah, so far I think from the hardware side, from how the LEDs look like from the LED strip, from um, the controller, from the board. It is already working good, but we're working on several revisions for that as well and a beautiful case. And maybe even adding an HDMI slot that you have a hybrid all-in-one solution for your inputs and for your smart TV. That would be really, really cool. So yeah, let me know down below in the comments if you're interested in that and also let me know what solution you're using right now. Have you tried the camera on top of that? Is that working good? Balash has tested it from tech video and he said, well, it's not working so good. It's basically like the screen recording displaying some random colors. But yeah, let me know. Alrighty guys, so we're now here at the end of this video and really guys, I need your feedback, so listen carefully and put every input down below into the description. So while it's very hard to make a universal product that works with all kinds of smart TVs, because there are different generations of smart TVs, there are Android TVs, there are smart TVs which work on Linux, and it's not really easy that you can make one solution that communicates with all the TVs. Well, with a camera on top, it's working, but it's not that product that we want, because it's not a perfect solution. We want something that is really good and really affordable and easy to use. So this is why we're developing our own application right now for Android, so for Android TV actually, um, that is working with um, the hardware. We're now using that third party application just to test the hardware, but well, um, we have a software engineering team in China that is working on the application. So um, we also don't want that you have to count the LEDs and all that, it's pretty complicated. Most of, of you guys want an easy, straightforward uh, solution. That's why we'll probably have different kits um, um, and you just plug it in, you start the software, it's running, you don't have to count everything. It won't be an easy challenge, but we're trying to do that. Also, there is a problem with some applications, as you've seen, so Netflix could be a problem because um, with screen recording, that is not working. So we need to come up with a different solution for that. And also, what happens if you connect an HDMI input? Because then, basically Android, at least here on the chick, is not active anymore. It's active in the background, but it's not recording the screen. So when you're doing that, um, you probably need another HDMI input on that board as well, which basically can do um, both. So um, take care of the HDMI inputs if there's an HDMI input or switch back to Android TV um, when you're an Android TV. And well, we are working on a solution for that and I would be really happy if you guys support us and there will be more news about this very soon. But so far, um, I think 
that could be a cool thing that is changing something because of all the solutions on the market right now i'm not really happy myself as a customer and i've seen that there's potential for something new and yeah let's change the future of ambient lights on smart tvs and yeah more info soon i hope you like this video and if you want to have some more information then you can contact me on youtube or go to my website and contact me and or basically on instagram it's the easiest and fastest way so big thanks for watching this video until here as always guys i'm steven from tech magnet and i'll catch you in the next one have a nice day and bye